Welcome back to the 10 Minutes On podcast. This is part two of Sienna Sexton's conversation with Elizabeth Minor from Article 36 on autonomous weapons. If there is negotiation of new international law, clearly there are some new ethical issues and questions that are going to have to be considered. What are some of these bigger issues and questions that are arising out of the development in weaponry technology? So I think I'd probably boil the key issues down to two things. So sort of further dehumanisation in violence and war and the use of force and also risks to meaningful human control and, you know, human decision making and participation in the use of force. So from our perspective, we really want to avoid a future where machines can effectively be tasked to kill or use force on people without the users of those systems and people fully understanding or being meaningfully responsible for what the consequences will be with systems that could also you know, reproduce and advance the biases and discriminations that already exist in our societies in increasingly dangerous ways if you know, AI is integrated into systems to target people automatically. I think as well, increasing autonomy undermines the application of the law as it currently stands in armed conflicts if people are making legal judgments in the use of force based on ever more diluted understandings of where, when and to what or who force is going to be applied by the systems that they're using. And this kind of erosion of, of meaningful control undermines accountability as well and responsibility. As well, I think there's, you know, a kind of global risk here uh, to peace and security with dynamics of competition in states that are developing these systems and also in you know possible high speed escalations in their use. So there's a lot of kind of new novel and dangerous issues in this area, which really need specific attention, I'd say. There's a lot to consider. We focused on a lot of the issues and also the need for regulation. But I've also come across comment that actually like some of the maybe some of the positives are around autonomous weapons is their ability to be more accurate and so to reduce civilian casualties is there a world in which actually autonomous weapons are a good thing maybe that's like a controversial question well, it's a good question because this is something that, you know, states have raised in the debate as well, that maybe, you know, autonomous weapons and increasing autonomy could help them to implement international law better. Of course, you know, militaries in war have an obligation to and should always be seeking to reduce harm to civilians and the weapons they choose to use is, is part of that. So, for example, parties to conflict should avoid using bombs with high explosive yields that will have wide area effects in populated areas if they want to reduce the risks to civilians. And like you said, there are these claims that, you know, advanced autonomous weaponry could be more accurate or precise in hitting intended targets. And so that would reduce the risk of casualties. But I think whether these claims sort of stand up to scrutiny technically, whether with current or future technology, which I mean, I'm a bit sceptical of to start with, I think there's a there's a broader question here of if we want to protect civilians and indeed, you know, prevent and resolve armed conflicts, there's much more we need to attend to than the accuracy of weapon systems, right? And accuracy in weapon systems and precision aside, I think autonomous weapons raise much bigger questions that need to be answered about you know, what we consider acceptable in our relationship with technology and in violence and warfare generally. And I guess I mean, in general as well, I'd be suspicious personally of any proposition that new weaponry should be developed for the benefit of civilians, because I think we've seen that, you know, revolutions in warfare generally haven't really gone well for people living through armed conflict. Thank you. That is a sobering, but also really helpful response to that question. So working in arms control, it's you're working like in in a really difficult environment in terms of affecting change. How do you feel... What keeps you hopeful? What keeps you going when you're trying to impact these really big international bodies and nation states? Also, have you seen any particular positive stories, either nationally or globally, um, in the reduction of harm from weapons? Yeah, it'd be a good question as well. And, you know, it can feel hard to feel hopeful and it can feel like a increasingly difficult time, right, to be advocating for things like peace and disarmament or even the protection of civilians and the basic rules of international law and I suppose I'd say what, what keeps me going from my perspective are really the movements that I work in and the people in them. And I think at the moment, it's really important to be seeing kind of more people uh, looking at these issues and 
making the connections right now between what's going on in armed conflicts around the world and the role of the international legal and diplomatic system in that and our governments and the arms industry as well, connecting those dots. And I guess one hopeful thing for me when it comes to my area of advocating for the strengthening of international laws and norms to protect civilians is we know we can make change and get new treaties and that those treaties can have a real impact, right? So we saw this in For example, the movements to ban landmines and cluster munitions and remediate the harm to communities caused by these weapons. Uh, Some of my colleagues were involved in the global coalitions advocating for those treaties, which really do, you know, they have had an impact for people living through and with the aftermath of armed conflicts. More recently as well, Article 36, we're part of the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. And we had a few roles in advocating for the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons that was concluded in 2017. Obviously, nuclear weapons are a big one to tackle and are another podcast. But just to highlight one thing there as well, we've already seen with this treaty that it's been influencing investments in nuclear weapons producers, which is you know, a really significant piece of the puzzle. So these wins are, I suppose, what keeps us all going and shows that we, we can you know, make challenges here and we can have a real impact. Thank you so much. It's been really helpful to end both on hope and action because with an issue as complex and challenging as autonomous weapons, I think we could feel very overwhelmed, but actually there's so much that we can do. If you're listening now and you want to find out more about Article 36 where Elizabeth works, you can go to article36.org and for more information about the Joint Public Issues team, go to our website, jpit.uk. Elizabeth, thank you so much for this really important conversation and for sharing more about this really complex but sobering and also very important issue. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please share it around. That's it for this episode of the 10 Minutes On podcast focused on the future of arms. If you'd like to find out more about advances in warfare, head to jpit.uk slash FOA for briefings, blogs, videos, ways to take action and more podcast episodes.